Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. This is David Hyman, your tour guide in Israel. Hi everyone from Jerusalem. We are uh, filming today in Jerusalem in the Israel Museum. Uh, so join us on this wonderful tour. The Israel Museum is Israel's national museum. It was built in 1965 on Jerusalem's Givat Ram Hill, very close to Israel's parliament, the Knesset. The museum was the initiative of Jerusalem's legendary mayor, Teddy Kolik, and was designed as a series of stone rectangular buildings by architect Al Mansfield. The museum's exhibits are divided to three main categories, fine arts, Judaica, and archaeology. The museum is most famous for the two exhibits that we will explore today, the Shrine of the Book, where Israel keeps the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the model of Jerusalem during the days of the Second Temple. This is the famous model of Jerusalem in the days of the Second Temple, first century. Two sources were used to, to gather the information to build the model of Jerusalem. One was archaeology. The other source was a historic source. The historian Josephus Flavius wrote in detail about the city and all his information from his books was also gathered and used to rebuild the model of Jerusalem. This is limestone carved from the mountains of Jerusalem. And the first thing they did was build uh, the topography according to the real terrain of the city. And right in front of us we can see the largest structure, the main structure, the second temple, Herod's temple. On the northern corner of the Temple Mount is a fortress with four towers on each corner. See it? That is called the Antonia Fortress. That was built by King Herod. And that is the place where, according to the tradition, Jesus was tried in front of Pontius Pilate in the Praetorium. Now we're looking at the city from the west side, facing east. The gate we can see right in front of us, the little one, that is pretty much on the location of Jaffa Gate. These three towers we can see here, one of these towers, the base is still at Jaffa Gate. It's called Metsudat David, the citadel. Now, if we look to the, towards the temple, the building with the mar white marble, with the gold ornaments, the wall below it, that's the western wall. In front of the wall, there's like a round quarry with a rock with a flat top on it. That is Calvary. That's Golgotha. And you can see that it's outside the wall. This side, we can see the city of David. It is this narrow ridge. Down here, there's a pool. This is the Brechat Shiloh, the pool of Siloam. So the water for, to the pool of Siloam would come from the Gihon Spring. So this whole area here that we call the city of David, this is the oldest part of Jerusalem. This is where Jerusalem started when King David attacks the city 3,000 years ago. Why is this the oldest part of Jerusalem? Because this is where the water source is. From here we can see really, really well the two double gates. Uh, they call them Sha'are Khulda. These gates were the gates where the pilgrims would enter. Then they would climb up these steps, go in through one of the double doors, uh, celebrate on the Temple Mount, and when they're done, come down a separate set of doors. Well, this gate is at the site of the gate that we call today Shara Hamim, the gates of mercy, the golden gates. And on the south side, there is the royal portico, which was a shaded covered area for um, trade and for gathering, Antonia Fortress. And in the center is the temple, Bet Amigdash Asheni, or Herod's temple, the second temple. We can see that there's a courtyard in front of the entrance and then a second courtyard and then there's a golden door and the two pillars on both sides of the main entrance and the golden door leads into a chamber called Kodesh HaKodashim, Holy of Holies. And into the main building, the Kodesh HaKodashim, only one person can enter, the high priest, and only on one day of the year, Yom Kippur. So when he goes in there, on Yom Kippur, the high priest into the Holy of Holies, he prays for one thing only. Can anyone guess what he prays for? Geshe. Geshe. He prays for rain. He prays for rain inside the Holy of Holies. That's the prayer. And he asks for forgiveness for all the people's sins. That they would tie a rope to his waist 
because no one can go in if something happens to him and they have to pull him out with a rope if he faints. Beautiful up here, huh? Is there people? We are standing on the roof of the Shrine of the Book. Here, Shrine of the Book. So the roof also has a lot of symbolism. There's a, a building in the shape of a lid of the jar. The jars that the scrolls were found in had lids. So the roof of the um, Shrine of the Book has the shape of the lid of the jar. Underneath this, inside there, that's where they keep the scrolls. Now the water on the lid is because of the purification. The Yisians or the people that wrote the scrolls, they were very busy with keeping pure and holy. So that's the symbolism of the water. And the white is because they consider themselves uh, and Sheha'o, the people of the righteousness. Their enemies were, were Anshea Choshech, the people of the darkness. And therefore the artist put a black wall in front of the white dome. So the scrolls were found by accident. Uh, a Bedouin child was walking through the desert near the Dead Sea with his goats and a few goats were missing and he climbed into a cave looking for his missing goats and he was throwing rocks and then he heard he was throwing rocks to scare the goats out of the cave and then he heard noise of shattered, shattered glass and he crawls in to the cave and he finds jars with a lid and he opens the lid and he pulls out a leather scroll rolled up and he can see that there's writing on it so he thinks that this is valuable enough for him to make a little few dollars out of this and he takes the scrolls to his family to his parents they live in a tent they're Bedouin and his family take the scrolls to uh, the antique dealer in Bethlehem his name is Mr. Kandu like that's a great name if you're an antique dealer Mr. Kandu and he immediately realizes that this is valuable and it's ancient uh, when they started the excavations they found uh, nearly 15 caves with scrolls all around the Dead Sea in an area that we call Qumran. Okay, that's how the scrolls were found. This happened in 1947, so that's about, what, 75 years ago. Before they found these scrolls, the oldest Torah, Torah in Hebrew that we had, was from the 10th century. It's called Keter Aram Tzova, the Aleppo Codex. So, so inside, I cannot film. Uh, I will put a link to um, a website where you can see the scrolls. Okay, let's go. Wow. Shiri, how are the scrolls? It's how fascinating to see all these scrolls from 2000 years ago uh, you can't believe that you just can read the Hebrew letters this is the uh, sculpture garden of the Israel Museum Ahava in Hebrew it means love We really hope that you enjoyed this tour of Jerusalem, the Israel Museum. So if you did, please give us a big thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel 
and write a comment and let us know where you'd like to go on our next tour of Wonderful Israel. Litrot, everyone. Bye.